that's why so quick. 150 gun it, I'ma run it in the fast lane. Pass lanes, watch me like a mad name. Run it through the tall, easy pass him in the cash lane. The past saying, and I'm never looking back, man. Pop shit, I ain't really trying to talk it out. Drop hits, I can show you what it's all about. Hello and welcome to Sharp Bets Fantasy Sets. I'm here with Big Time Sim Secure. And sir, we are once again without Nick. He will be back next week, so he says. <laughs> I'm also not wearing a hat. Happy holidays, everyone. A couple days from Christmas. We're going hatless here, so for anyone who's wanting to see my hair, not bad for my age. I don't say I got to. Nobody wants to see your hair, Mick. Right. <laughs> nice First of all, there's a reason why me and sir are wearing hats and we're not taking them off. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, I figure I show it. I figure I show it off a bit. Solid haircut. Looks like a Lego a bit, but it is what it is. Right. So, um, all right. Last week we had some things happen. Um, the Packers clinched the division. Oddly enough, the only team to clinch a playoff spot, I believe, which this deep into the season is very strange. Um, Cowboys could clinch the division this week with like three different scenarios. You're going to see a couple playoff spots clinched. Um, so let's start with, um, you know what? Let's go with the Jets this week. We'll start with the once again losing team. Um, Y'all are assholes, not a horrible, by the way. Not a horrible <laughs> performance. It, it seemed like this was a little more watchable of a game than the past couple weeks. So, Tim, any good signs? I know you hate losing to the Dolphins, though, right? That that one hurts you. No, not really. I mean, I yeah, it, it, you come to expect it. It's the yeah. problem is, is that the Jets. I, this is the time point in time in the season where I'm going to say it again. Just show me a little bit of something. Just keep keep getting better offensively. Keep trying to get better defensively. I know it's hard for you guys to do. Y'all got to take the L week after week after week. But just get my quarterback. Keep him healthy. Let him play the last three games. Maybe we'll we'll win a game to screw us out of a you know better pick in in the uh, in a draft next year. But we'll see. Yeah, all things considered, you do have your piece, the quarterback. So uh, we don't know if he is the guy yet, but at least you got that the one piece oh. that a lot of teams usually spend years searching for as the New York Giants might be searching for. So we'll move to the Cowboys, my team. Um, uh, really not much to say. The Giants didn't stand a chance. Dallas owns this division. They might own it for the next few years if they play their cards right and just don't stub their toe. I would say with their quarterback, their division is theirs unless they really stub their toe for the next couple years. But the, they'll probably clinch this week. I, I I think that if not this week, they're they're not losing this division out. Oddly enough, this division, which is crazy, since 03 and 04, there has not been a repeat division winner for the last 17 years. It changes every year. It's a very diverse division as far as winners. So we're gonna have another different winner as Washington won it last year. So Cowboys should win this week. Offense didn't look great. Defense looks phenomenal. But then again, it's Mike Glennon. So when they go up against Arizona in a couple weeks, uh, we'll find out. All right, sir. All right, sir. Sir. No, no, no. What I'm saying, they used to go to Arizona like, bruh, it's the same team that just took the L to, to, to your Detroit Lions. Come on, man. That's true. Hey, football, you never know. I, I mean, well, like, we say this you. every week. We say, sir, you guys are on a roll here. Uh, once again, I... Uh, Dallas in a two spot. Why um, the Niners in a six spot right now? I think when five, all five, five, spot. five when all said and done, I think we might have a Cowboy Niner matchup with the six three five four. So it's a team I don't want to play um, with the weapons they have. Uh, I'd rather play Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why, sir? Why? Why do you want to play Kirk Cousins? I thought he was amazing. Well, I think Kirk Cousins is better than Garoppolo, but I think the team in general, I'm more scared of the Niners than the Vikings. Wait, you say Kirk Cousins better than Jimmy G? Come on. We've had this argument. Stop it. Stop it, fam. Stop it. Come on. Might as well just change the show title to, like, the Kirk Cousins Hour. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man. But see, you you, you don't really believe that Kirk Cousins is better than Jimmy G, fam. Come on. But, yeah, we. I think they're very close. So how you feeling, sir, though? Like, at first, it started off bad. I remember me, like, what, seven, eight weeks ago, I was talking about just benching Jimmy G, letting uh, Lance play. I was in the wrong. I'm okay with admitting that. Um, I mean, how, how do you how do you like your chance? Well, hold on. Yeah, all right. A couple weeks when you said that, what did I say? It's like, keep you play Jimmy G and right. keep keep grinding. Because, you know what I'm saying? You, the schedule schedule's, you know, set up nicely. So, yeah, we're, yeah. we're still, you know, get a couple W's and. They, they look. They looked good against last week against the Falcons. Defense came to play. You know, Bosa's still out there hunting quarterbacks. The defense, offense is looking amazing, nice. So, 
Yeah, they're they're a dangerous team. Granted, I know I know it was the Falcons, but still, hey, can only you play, play who's, you play who's in front. You play who's in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Every, every absolutely any team can be beat. Now, um, this whole NFL season right now has just been crushed with this new COVID variant. So who the hell knows what's going on? Um, <laughs> just uh, oh, hey, this 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 thing is wrecking my fancy teams, bro. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Luckily, like every time I look, this person's on the list. This person's on right. the list. Like, bro, I was all season. I was like, man, I'm good. I'm like, I'm like, no injuries. We good. And now this thing. Yeah. So uh. I know they changed some protocols where they're gonna do uh, less testing on vaccinated players. We're only we're. I think when the NFL playoffs starts, and this might be a little controversial to some people, but I really do believe they are just going to stop testing vaccinated players with no symptoms. I really think they're going to get to that point in any league. Uh, This COVID is here to stay. I'm not taking a political stance by any means, but they're going to have to somehow start to figure out how to live with it instead of trying to avoid it. Cause like they said, this isn't going anywhere. So uh, if you're vaccinated with no symptoms, you're, I think you're probably going to be allowed to play. Uh, Do you guys agree with that? I think something has to be done. Yeah. I mean, they just can't. It's gutting the league. They can only move so many games. Like, when I heard there was a report that they were possibly – that the three games that they moved were super close to being canceled, and I don't think that, that they could physically do that this late in the season. I, no. they, I know there is that one gravy week that's uh, in between, uh, but there's no, there's no way. I just yeah. – I don't see it happening. They're, I don't know. I, I think maybe you're – Opinion is correct, but I, I don't know what they're going to do, but they, they need to do something. They need to figure it out. Yeah. I, yeah, Especially like in football, you say it's close contact. Like everybody's like, they're, they're always surrounded. Like and even in the huddle, when they're talking plays, like that's, everybody's in close contact. So, you know, you're going to get an outbreak if somebody tests positive. Right. And I, and I actually, I'm, I'm very safe. I'm on the side of where like, I still wear a mask almost everywhere I go. Um, but I do think that they should allow these players to play. Listen, they got the vaccine. Um, if the, these are athletes, if they're not showing symptoms, you just can't keep testing people because you're going to get positives, more testing, more positives. And and I, I don't trust everything the government says, but the people in charge have come out and said this new variant really is just like the common cold. Like they're even saying it's not at all near the first train. So that, that's it for the COVID talk, though. We don't, we don't want to be happy. We're here with the holidays. One game we'll go over really quick is uh, the Ravens-Packers game. Now, as a Cowboy fan, if the Packers lost that game and there's a four-way tie, Dallas gets the one seed because of their NFC conference record. So I was a little upset there that Harbaugh once again decided to go for two. The first time, I was actually all for it. This time, I hated it. I hated it from the start. They had all the momentum going, and I do feel if you get into overtime in that game, you're going to win that game the way that Huntley was playing. So, sir, I'll start with you. Did you like it? Wait, so what's what's the difference between the last time and this time? Uh, The Steelers, the feel of the game. Uh, it, for me, it was the feel of the game. I watched the game, both of the games. I feel like that game they were versus Steelers, they were lucky to get in. They looked like crap. And they got in. Harbaugh said their defense was injured. He didn't trust overtime. I'm okay with that. Plus, you had Lamar Jackson, so, like, fine. That's your MVP. This game, this kid led you down. Two touchdowns. The feel of the game here, The all the momentum was Baltimore. That I felt like no matter what, you get that game into overtime. And I hated the play call as well. A roll to the right. You shrink the yeah. – Especially, on, like, last week. The, the, you, yeah, you rolled out. You had a Hollywood Brown running along the back end of the end zone, like wide open. Like, you know, they were all glued up toward Andrews. or And like, so obviously, but if you just looked, if they scan the field, which I mean, yes, I know he's a young quarterback, but if all you do is look up and you hit and you hit Hollywood easy for a touch Correct. on that, uh, so, that same play. So, so would you have gone for it? That's tough. That's tough to call. I mean, I don't know. I don't really agree with it, but I see why they did it. All right. That's fair. Tim? Because still, you're going, you're going against Aaron Rodgers. You've got a young quarterback. If 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 you make it if he if he converts that touchdown, we're not talking about it right now. You know what I'm saying? We're like, oh, Ravens. You know, what a, got what a the, great call! What a great exactly. call to go for What a for great two. call! What a what a gutty call! Way to get way to get that W. And, you know, yeah. but he game, didn't get it. Now we're talking you about have why won. do it. Listen, you have a chance to be Aaron Rodgers. You take it. You don't get. You don't. You don't chance it on what could happen in overtime. Right. They could lose a toss, and they'll never touch the ball again. And if that happens, and Aaron Rodgers marches down the field and scores a touchdown, and you lose, you're like, oh, fuck, why didn't we just go for two when we had the chance to win the game against Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers, you know, with a backup quarterback? 
I, I don't know. It, if if he does it again, it's like I'll say it's a 50-50 chance that they score. You know, better play call that it's maybe it's a 75% chance that they, you know, that they score and they win. Right. I don't know. That it made perfect sense to me. I and I bet you if you ask him again, he would do it, you know, 10, 10 out of 10 times. And yeah. I, honestly, so would I. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have there. We could disagree on that. It's just the feel of the game. Like even the Chiefs game Thursday night uh, when they tied it, I was for kicking that extra point. Um, but I get what you're saying. I just – why give Aaron Rodgers another shot? I don't know. This game felt weird. I didn't feel like the Packers were going to do anything in overtime. But whatever. All in all, Packers won. And I do think the road will go through Lambeau in the NFC. I don't think they're going to lose another game. Uh, and they're going to get the one seed. So we'll see there. Um, we're going to get to our pick segment here. Uh, we got Tim with a three and two week last week. He is at 28, two and two. I had a four and one week. I'm at 28, 21 and one. Sir with a two and three week. Uh, he stands at 21, 27 and two. And Nick with a two and three week or uh, let me see three and two week. He stands at 22 and 28. So Tim and I are really neck and neck here with a couple weeks left. Our picks are, I'm pretty impressed with our records here, seeing as a lot of the shows we listen to, the records are abysmal. So um, we're going to start at the basement, though, with Sir. Uh, we will get Nick's picks in and post them by the end of the week and the show. And uh, we'll have an update next week. Sir, we'll start with you. We're going to do two Saturday games, the Christmas games, and our usual three. So we'll actually all start together with the Saturday games. So right now, I got the first game is Cleveland at Green Bay. So it's a plus seven and a half with the over at 46. So choose one of those two as your pick. Sir, we'll start with you. Give me the over 46. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Aaron Rodgers at the crib. I'm saying, like, just, I like the over in this game. No particular reason, just, I don't, seven, seven is a lot, but it's still Aaron Rodgers, so. Right. When, when, when in doubt, apparently, yeah, I can't do unders, because apparently, like, last Thursday, I went the under, looked amazing until the fourth quarter, then they scored a million points. So, yeah. when in doubt, go with the over. Give me uh, over 46. Tim, what do you got? See, I don't know why you're in doubt, sir. Last four games, the Cleveland Browns, Every game has been decided has been decided by seven points or less. So will this one. Give me the Browns getting seven and a half. Really, Aaron Rodgers, you you, you couldn't beat goddamn the Ravens with their backup quarterback. Well, guess what? I don't care if Baker don't play. You're not. You might not beat the Browns with their backup quarterback. You know what, Tim? I I'm, I'm gonna have to roll with you on this one. As someone who usually never picks against the Packers, I do actually like the Browns. Maybe that hook is really taking me with that half point, but I don't know why sometimes, like we always say, you get a little feeling. Uh, Browns are a weird team. Very weird. They could come in and this could be a one-point game or they could get blown the hell out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take Cleveland plus seven and a half as well. So Tim and I are both stupid picking against Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, next game, a big game Saturday night, implications. Indianapolis, a plus one at Arizona, over under 40 and a half. Indianapolis coming off a big win at home, which I was the only one to get right out of everybody on the show last week because my boy Jonathan Taylor is just a beast. And I think sir's the boy. Okay, I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> sir's boy, Jonathan Taylor. Sir, what do you got on this one? I'm saying, usually I ride with this team, and last week I bet against them. It blew up in my face. We're going right back to him. Give me the Colts plus one against the, the Cardinals. The Cardinals don't look the same without New Hopkins. I mean, like, how, like with, with, without Hopkins, who are you, who are you really scared of oh, in that offense besides Kyler? I mean, like the receivers, like AJ Green. I mean, Kyle, Christian Kirk, Rondell Moore. I don't think so. Jonathan Taylor. Plus, you know, say so he's been running all over Pete teams. I I was a little worried with with Belichick, thinking he would, you know guard against him and try to like stop him and he still cooked him so yeah give me the give me the Colts plus one great back and if Rodgers slips up a bit uh he's definitely gonna be the MVP running back uh you can definitely see it if the Colts sneak into the playoffs Tim what do you got here there's no doubt in my mind that Jonathan Taylor is the MVP of the league this year I honestly and Scott I know what you're gonna say you're gonna pick Arizona because you know, they're due for a bounce back game after a terrible game. And uh, I, can, I can make the post for you. That's why I'm taking the Colts plus one. 
Give me JT. They're going to keep rolling. I, it's they can't. No one can stop that offensive line with their running game. Right. I just, it's just what it is. I, I'm taking the Colts plus one. Well, I love Jonathan Taylor. He's on my fantasy team, and he has ran. As you know, I'm only in one league. I always say that, and he has ran me to the semifinals right now. So I love him to death. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Cardinals are due for a bounce back win here after a loss to Detroit. I think this is going to be a high scoring game, 37 34 around there. I'm going with the Cardinals minus one at home in this game. So, Tim, basically, it was the post. Let, let, me, let me just point this out to you. Yeah. You're calling for the over to hit. Yes. But you'd saying, rather. Saying, if you think it's going to be 37 34, that's yes. the over. But no, you'd I'm rather go I, with I Arizona. I'd rather. Be wrong on the over. Hey, wait, wait, sir. What happens part. when you put the over the last time? I barely won. It was 14 13. No, no, no. Time out. Not, not barely won. You won. I, Period. Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I don't you don't, like, you don't like winning? What's wrong with you? Uh, how you win? I'm a, I'm a, point, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a straight up better. I don't like I don't like the points. It bothers me. All right, sir. We'll start the basement. No offense. We're going with you for your three picks, man. What do you got? All right. Pick one. Give me the Bengals minus three against Baltimore. These teams met up uh, in week seven of the season, and the Bengals absolutely blew these teams out the water. So, you know, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Tiggins, just give me the Bengals minus three. Plus, who, who knows if Lamar's playing? If I mean, he has Huntley look good, but still, I mean, still he's still a rookie, or still young, young. so I like the Bengals in this spot. The second game, you all know what I like to do. And that's bet against Kirk Cousins. Give me the Rams minus three and a half against against the Minnesota Vikings. Like, oh, the Ram, Rams offense is looking pretty solid, and it's Kirk Cousins and Dalvin Cook's probably not playing. Mm. You know, obviously that's yeah. the only reason why they won on against the Steelers was because Dalvin. No Dalvin. Kirk Cousins has the bigger load. I don't think so. Give me the Rams minus three and a half. And the third game, give me the Patriots minus two against the Bills. I know the Bills are a good team, but still. I trust Bill Belichick to get in, you know, and last time, hopefully it's not blizzard conditions, hopefully we get a little bit more points, but still, give me the Patriots. All and right. yes, Scott, I didn't take no overs this week, so just, just for you, old boy. Yeah, that's good. Actually, uh, to your Rams pick, you're right, the the Vikings get a lot of respect on the money, on the lines, actually. They really do. It's kind of weird, but uh, Kirk Cousins tried hard Monday night to give that game away again. He just didn't look too good, but uh, they pulled Lord, it off. He's Kirk Cousins, Mo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all right, I'll go next since uh, I'm in second place. So, just, dude. Scott, real real quick. Let let it be known that Kirk Cousins is 2-0 and in his last two primetime games, sir. Just uh, uh, This game is not played on primetime, first of all. And, uh, oh, I know. That one is 2-0 and in his last two <laughs> Okay. Hey, that's fine. All right, uh... I'll start off here at home. I'm going to take a home, two home underdogs and one home favorite. I'm going to start off with the Carolina Panthers at home versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is a plus 10. I'm taking Carolina here. Um, I don't know why this seems like a stupid pick. Tampa didn't look good at all last week. I think this is a weird game. Carolina could definitely cover the number. I can see it being 21-17, 24-17. So the plus 10 is pretty high. Uh, Christmas weekend, you know, Matt Rule, just cover the number, damn it. Even though Carolina stinks, but I like it. All right, next I'm going another weird team, the Raiders. Plus one at home versus the Broncos. Um, I, I like the home underdog. You guys know that. The Raiders are one of those teams that are just going to fall at 500 every year. So give me the Raiders at home plus one probably to win this game outright. And I'm going to Sunday night for my final game. The Dallas Cowboys minus 10 and a half. It's not even that big of a number versus a really putrid Washington team. Dallas' defenses look good. There's got to be a game where Dak and the offense get back on track. Why not? Prime time, chance to lock up the NFCs for the first time in three years. This is the game to do it. I think Dallas rolls in this game 28 to 10, 31 to 13. So give me Dallas minus 10 and a half. And I rarely bet on my team, but I love it. I was say, sir. Proud of you, old boy. Yeah, you bet your boys. Proud of yeah. you. This North is a North game North. I love set up. The worst part is I have to bet both of your teams more than you guys bet both yeah. of your teams. <laughs> I've been all over the Niners and all over the Cowboys all season long. So you're right, you're right about that. All right, Tim, what do you got? Well, see, now it's time for me to get on my team. That's right. Number one pick, the Jets in a pick em. Versus Jacksonville. You say, why, Tim? You just bash your team every week. Why? Because this will be the week where the Jets have a chance to, to lose, 
to move into close to the number one pick in the in NFL draft. So you know what's going to happen. Jets be the Jets. They're going to win. Uh, and they're not. it's not going to be a close win. They're going to blow out Jacksonville. Why? Don't fucking know. It, it, it's going to be the game where they put it all together. And they're going to be talking like, we've found the future. God damn it. I, I just, it's the Jets. I, that, that's it. I don't know. I just... Scott says you always have a feeling. Yeah. It, I got a feeling. I don't want to be right about the feeling, but I, you know, we'll see. Sir, uh, I agree with you on one pick, except I had it a half a point less. I'll go with the three and a half, although I like that way less. Give me the Rams against Minnesota. I know Minnesota's won two straight, but man, they did not look good doing it. No Dalvin Cook. He's officially out, sir, so get your Alex out, mm-hmm. Madison. You know. uh, yep. Get your Allen Madison uh, DFS in the in the lineup, and that, you know the Rams look great. You know, if you no one can stop Cooper Cup, even though really that's the only person they throw to ever. That's it's just amazing what he's doing this season. And for my final pick, let's go to Monday night. Give me the Dolphins minus one and a half against the Saints. Oh. I know the Dolphins have won six straight, and they have played the worst teams in the league to win those six straight games. But you know what? Like you guys said, you have to play who you have to play. They didn't make up the schedule, just like they didn't make up Taysom Hill and uh, whoever the backup is getting COVID. So they have some guy off the street coming in to play quarterback on Monday night. Sean Payton, I still don't think has cleared waiver, uh, cleared the COVID protocol either. So I don't think they have a head coach. With that being said, I fucking hate betting on Tua, but he gets back Jalen Waddle. He gets back to safety. His safety blanket for a receiver. I got to take the Dolphins minus one and a half. Yeah, look at you bet to a Tebow. Go ahead, old boy. Shut up, sir. I did these Two of these picks go against everything I ever lived with. Yeah, yeah, you bet to a Tebow and you bet the Jets. Man, what is in that cup, old boy? A lot of alcohol. Yes. Merry <laughs> Christmas. My man. All right, so we'll move on to DFS now. Um, I'll start it off here. Once again, this is COVID pending, so just go into the- I was like, yeah. <laughs> Don't wait till Sunday to put this line, to put exactly. any lineup in because I, last week I set a lineup and then I checked again on Sunday right. and like half of these jibbies were out of, were out the line or weren't playing so I'm like I had to blow up the whole thing and start over so. <laughs> I have, Sunday. Start, I have to start by saying, and I normally don't like this segment. I love my lineup here. I love my lineup here. Before before you give your lineup, Scott, let's give a shout out to uh, Mr. JG six zero three. Give him a follow on uh, Twitch, Twitter, all all the. All the followings for for our boy. He he actually put a lineup in, and rightfully so, took it down. His uh, yeah. he went he Texans. went heavy on Houston Jacksonville, Crazy. and he, we we talked about it on the show. And the game was pretty uh there was there was points scored in that game. So yeah, GGS. Gotta give him, on, gotta give him credit over there. He's on to something. Gotta give him credit there. All right, I'll start off quarterback um, seventy two hundred. I'm gonna go with Justin Herbert. I'm also going to pair him with a running back, Justin Jackson at 4,200. We actually got a lot of touches. Eckler hasn't been fully healthy, and he might be on the COVID list. So I'm going to go Justin Jackson, 4,200. Northwestern, I remember watching him. Good runner. I'm going to go running back, Joe Mixon, 6,900. I'm going to go Mooney on the Bears, 5,400. Then I'm going to pair Mike Williams with Herbert as well at 6,100. This gave me enough money left over at wide receiver to take Cooper Cup at 9,100. Hunter. So I'm definitely taking him. You could argue he is an MVP candidate as well if the receivers ever got it. Uh, tight end, I'll go another bear, Jimmy Graham. And flex, another tight end, which I hate doing, Kyle Pitts, 5,800. And defense, I'm going cheap defense, 2,300, the Carolina Panthers versus the Tom Brady Buccaneers at home. So I do like this lineup, and I might actually put it in. So it is what it is. <laughs> You, boy? It must be Christmas season. Scott's you know got mean? some extra money in his stocking. Oh, yeah. All right, sir, go for it. All right, so, you know, again, wait till Sunday to put this lineup, to put a lineup in. But for right now, at quarterback, give me Joe Burrow, 5,900. I mentioned it in our picks. Week seven, Joe Burrow threw for 416 and three touchdowns against these same Baltimore Ravens. Put up 30 point uh, DK points. So at 5,900, that's, uh, that's pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. And out of those 416 yards, 201 and one touchdown wins at Jamar Chase at 7,100. Give me him as well. It's Jamar Chase, you know what I'm saying? He, he had a little bit of a dud last week, but he's still, he's still a beast. Wide receiver two, I'm going to go with T. Higgins also at 6,200. 
you know, last week he was a dud, but three games before that, he was averaging 25 DK points. He's been putting up numbers. This The whole Bengals office has. So, with that said, Mixon's probably going to go off, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. Wide receiver three, you mentioned it. Like, give me Antonio Brown at 4,900. No Chris Godwin out for the season. No Mike Evans is questionable for this game. So, so the target's got to go somewhere. AB's returning, 4,900. Just too cheap for a number one receiver at that on that team right now. At running backs, sorry, old boy, but got to go your boy, J- Mr. James Robinson, 5,900 against those New York football Jets. It's the Jets. I'm sorry, old boy, but you, know, you, you already know. And running back two, you mentioned it. Give me Justin Jackson, 4,200 against the Texans. Eckler's not looking that great. Who, who knows? If he, I hope he plays because my fantasy team hopes it, but it's not looking too good. So 4,200, just too cheap. At tight end, Mark Andrews, 7K. I don't usually like paying it for tight ends, but Andrews put up numbers, yeah. whether it's Lamar or Huntley, you know, at a 7K, it's not bad. At Flex, I mentioned the target shares in, in Tampa, you know, going to AB. Well, most if it's not AB, it's going to Rob Gronkowski, 6,200. You know, it's the Panthers still. Panthers can't really stop, stop anybody. So I look for Brady to throw all over the yard. And at defense, 2,500, the Chicago Bears. Playing against those trash Seahawks. When they're when they're not playing the Niners, the Seahawks look like trash. When they play us, they look like world beaters. Hmm. So it's, that happens. Tim, what do you got? Surprise! You guys going with that double tight end uh, yeah. in the flex there? That's well, Kyle, Pitts, Kyle Pitts is like his only wide receiver, so <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's fair. <laughs> Same thing with Andrews. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Both are both are fair. All right, quarterback. Give me Matt Stafford, 6,700 against Minnesota. I'm really big on the Rams this week, so I paired him with Cooper Cup at 9,100. Like I said, those guys, uh, you can't stop them, even if you try to. At running back, give me Rojo, Ronald Jones, 5,100 against the Rams. He's going to fill in that Leonard Fournette spot. I love him for any time touchdown in that game. I don't know what the odds are. I didn't look at it yet, but that's definitely going in this weekend. And we all have the same RB2. That's Justin Jackson against Houston. If Eckler's not, definitely not playing, that's an automatic number two spot. I, I would imagine he'd be in 99% of the leagues. I, I, I can't imagine somebody passing him up for that price point. At wide receiver two, sir, I'm with you on this one. Give me AB at 4,900. No Godwin, possibly no Evans. You know, and it's Antonio Brown and... Brady loves throwing to him when they have everybody active. So with it only being him and Gronk, he could put up some big numbers. At wide receiver three, give me Gabe Davis in uh, Buffalo against New England. Four touchdowns in his last three games, 4,700. Going with him. Tight end, Dallas Goddard, 5,100 against the Giants. 27.5 points his last two games in, in DFS. He's solid. Uh, and at the flex, I got to go with him. I know it goes against my Rams pick, but every time Alexander Madison is in the lineup, he puts up nothing but fantasy points. Albeit they don't win, but he does work. Alvin's out. I'm throwing him in the flex 6,800. And at defense, since I have a couple cheap options, I paid up this, this week for uh, the Chargers at 3,400 against... The Texans. Why? Because it's the Texans. Fair. Yeah. No, no, I had to laugh a little bit that Gabe Davis because <laughs> Sunday I was watching the game with my man and Gabe was like, what the hell, God, what is Gabe Davis doing? Like, why he got so many points? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, he he yeah, may have on. fucked me last week in fantasy. Just All right. We're going to keep that episode, this episode short and sweet because it's the holiday coming up and uh, I know everyone has things to do here. So um, really quick, uh, nice Thursday night game. I like the Titans to win straight up. I didn't include it in my pick, but I think they are due for that home win, home underdog. Lay some shekels on them if you believe in me. So all right, this is it. Happy holidays, guys. If you want to hang on Twitch, we give a couple prop bets. Goodbye, everyone.